There you go. This is the old water heater that we got from uh, a neighbor's place that was just sitting around. Really looked damaged. So we took we took the that old water heater. We stripped it down, took out the insulation, you know, sanded this whole thing down, and painted it, painted this uh, tank with a with a ceiling uh, spray paint. So in case there are some leaks in the tank, uh, the paint will be able to seal it up, preventing preventing any water from leaking out of this tank. This is a 50 gallon tank, and we are gonna turn this tank into a. Or we're going to use this tank for a solar batch water heater project that we're doing for the Center for Island Sustainability. Well, while we were cleaning the tanks, um, while we drained it the first time, there was a bunch of white things, white kind of particles and white water that came out, um, which led us to believe that there was a lot of lime and cal calcium buildup in the tank over the years. So one of our challenges now is to clean the tank out of this um, this lime and calcium build up inside the tank and it's kind of hard because we have only limited openings uh, I'm gonna tilt it in right now I'm gonna tilt it down and you're gonna see what kind of water comes out of this and um, you know that's just that's Guam water but that's just Guam's water uh, just to let you know to look out for but it looks good it looks like it's cleaning up really it's more clear yep Uh, it's a box for the solar power water heater and um, basically we just uh, use measurements to cut 2x4 and um, to uh, secure it right, to make the right frame and to actually put it at an angle as well uh, to catch the sun in the right way with the screen here on the floor. Supplies we use um, like six pieces of 2x4 but uh, we made a little mistake, it wasn't enough, so we scavenged for some more, I guess, and um, we used some silicone glue, nails, screws to put it in, tape measure to measure all the wood, and um, yeah. Gonna Next do? thing we're going to do is um, we're going to paint the wood so it wouldn't degrade as, as fast, and um, we're going to start putting the insulation inside. Uh, styrofoam, styrofoam insulation, and um, we're going to be putting it on the outside, I think, the outside, and then, yeah, that's about it. Alright, there is our bottom framing. Alright, very simple, but very strong at the same time. Uh, you can see that all the reflective styrofoam insulation is aligned on the outside border of the, the frame, even in the tops. Right there, they're all aligned on the outside border. Simply because our tank was uh, a little bit bigger than we wanted it to be, so we had to extend this this box uh, in a way where um, it fits the f the window, yet it's a little bit bigger on the inside for the big tank. This glass right here, we bought that from a used construction supply material material store and this glass used to be I believe used for uh, sliding glass door for a for a bath uh, so it was a part of a shower before and then I guess they renovated the place and threw away this piece of glass and we were lucky enough to find it um, there were also a lot of other pieces of uh, glass windows and doors in that place so um, there's a lot of potential for building solar hot water heaters with the spare parts that this island has. Here's just a, here's a side view of our um, box. You can see it is at an angle right there to capture maximum sunlight. Um, you know the glass is there. It's si similar to a solar oven. Uh, the concept is the same in that the glass on top lets sunlight in right sunlight touches the surface inside the box the black tank and it turns into heat but it the glass doesn't let the heat escape so it keeps it in the box so it keeps the hot water uh, hot for longer periods of time like I mentioned earlier
Uh, so as you can see, we're we're almost done with our um, solar batch hot water heater, and uh, the last time that we filmed, we had just uh, got the frame finished. So one of the next things that we did was we put these um, reflective insulation, styrofoam insulation inside, so that when the sun hits in all corners of the inside of this box it all reflects that sunlight into the black tank which is which is what's going to hold our our hot water heater or our hot water um, also we've um, we've done the exterior uh, wall of the box uh, as you can see it, it required cutting some angles and also um, some sanding to smoothen the surface and so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put all of our reflective insulation inside the box and then we are going to paint it we're gonna go and paint go ahead and paint this box color green and then we'll we'll keep you guys updated after that and uh, Joe just to um, show you guys remember our tank was a little bit bigger than we thought uh, a little bit bigger than we wanted it to be so we made the box we extended the box outside so you can see that the outer lay uh, the insulation is on in the outer uh, layer of the actual box and it's like that on all uh, corners of this box so uh, what we did was instead of exposing the insulated styrofoam we put this little panel right here on all four corners so we can hide um, the insulation and keep the heat in and that's where our glass door is gonna lay so after we finish painting we're gonna put the glass door and then seal this corner up right there so all four corners would be sealed as you can see right there if you look down here this is gonna be the bottom portion of the the reflective insulation inside the box and that piece of wood in the middle is what's going to be holding our tank. Uh, this is going to be a 50 gallon tank which is pretty big and pretty heavy so we have to reinforce this piece right there. So here is our tank holder. If you remember um, we had this tank holder it was just uh, pieces of 2x6 and 2x4s put together in a simple way. It was just a uh, and you know, it's stock, there was no paint, but now we've added some reflective properties to it so that it can reflect off uh, the sunlight and into the tanks and also which means that uh, the wood would last longer uh, it won't degrade as fast as compared to uh, when the sun is just hitting it straight on so these reflecting uh, foils and stuff will will help keep uh, it will help prolong the life of um, the tank holder and if you look at the, some of the materials that I use um, just those are just some of the, the aluminum frames that you would normally see in the fiestas around islands so um, don't throw them away because you might find some use for them so just to update you all about what's been going on with the solar batch water heater as you can see we've put um, basically all the exterior walls on this solar uh, collector right here um, some of our measurements were kind of off very minimal but everything uh, worked out right and now we just put on the first coat of paint yeah, we, we colored it dark green right because we're all about going green and you can see the water tank in the background right there that water tank right there if I can focus just a little bit that water tank right there is gonna go inside that solar collector right there and we've already put some holes on the side for where the hoses right there, the inlet and the outlet would be uh, cold water inside and then hot water out and this box is just supposed to just uh, heat up the black water tank uh, um, heat up the water inside and shoot it out through our outlet our hot water outlet where we can use it inside 
and so right now we're trying to work with the maintenance to see where our how we can connect this into the house and we'll update you guys after um, that's we find out um, so some of the, the issues that we found out while building this this solar water heater and some of the things that we wanted to share with you guys is um, the first thing you should look at when you're when you're finding your your used water tank is um, the bites right here as you can see right uh, this is our first tank that we first installed and you see the bites were kind of dull they didn't have as much bite as they they would we did fit in the the copper pipings to see if it fit and they did but when we added water when we added water into the uh, to the system we found that there was a lot of leaks so you want to make sure that your bites are sufficient enough where the leaks won't come out um, like you can see right here it's throughout the years it, it's been smooth smoothened out uh, there's a lot of wear and tear on this so you know it, it creates a lot of issues for us so um, we decided to change the the tanks because of the the leaks happening uh, the second thing as well is the size of your tanks you can see the difference between these two tanks uh, this is a 50 gallon and this is around a, a 30 gallon 35 gallon um, it takes so much time although it does heat up it takes so much time for this uh, the water in here to heat up as opposed to a smaller water tank uh, to heat up water as well and so I think having a small family uh, you I think it will be better for you to use a smaller tank uh, if you have a bigger family a uh, bigger tank would work best but a smaller tank would heat up water a lot quicker than a bigger tank uh, if you can look uh, look right here um, we found a smaller tank so that it could heat water up a little bit quicker but we also have bites that are, are sufficient enough so that leaks won't occur when you put it in the system. There, as you can see. And so you want to make sure you want to make sure that there, the bites on your your uh, inlet and outlets are are in very very good condition so that you don't run into any issues in the future. At the same time, uh, for both tanks, the issue that we ran into another issue that we ran into was um, cleaning out the tanks. This tank had a lot of lime buildup. Uh, there was a lot of lime buildup, like you saw in an earlier video, uh, er, earlier clip. This one, however, had a lot of um, like mud and dirt buildup in it. So the first thing you want to do is make sure the bites are there, make sure your water tank is clean, and then also getting the right size tanks for your needs in your house. Um, after the issues we were facing um, regarding the bigger water tank, the 50 gallon uh, water tank uh, with the leaks and the size issues, you know, we were lucky enough to find a smaller water tank with sufficient threads and bites that would prevent leaks. And it just worked out perfectly. We didn't have to change the box size or anything like that. It fit on the holder. Um, as you can see, we connected the hoses, the inlet and the outlet. Right, we tested if there was any leaks. Um, very, very minimal. Right, uh, it's mainly uh, leaks wherever from the outside. Um, but yeah, we you can come here in the side and you have the inlet. Right, we have a, a backflow preventer. Right, to prevent um, water from leaking out of the uh, tanks, emptying out the tanks. It keeps all the water in there, and then uh, water goes in. Right, and as you can see, water is even preheated when it goes in because uh, the sun warms up the the garden hose which you know heats up the water and so hot water you know like at 90 degrees is going into the the tank uh, and then when it comes back out it it you know on a very bright sunny day it gets up to 130 degrees just really hot um all right and it's uh the water the tanks are pressurized because we're connected to um, the utility company's main system so the whole system is pressurized uh, that that water is hot right now it's, I, I don't have a measurement of what the temperature is but uh, from experience that feels like 115 117 degrees and the concept with this when the hot water the hot water that comes out you can use it on demand right if you have uh, 
you if you have an outdoor shower you can use that for outdoors but if you want to store it and have hot water during the night you would want to direct the hot water using another hose uh, into an existing hot water tank in your house and what that does is that it, it acts as a storing container keeping that hot water that was heated during the day from the from your system uh, to keep it warm and hot uh, throughout the night and potentially all the way to the morning so you have warm water in the morning for a shower if you want uh, right now we're trying to work with facilities trying to figure out what the plumbing situation is so we can connect it inside um, but the, the solar batch hot water heater works great uh, the water is really hot and it was just such a fun project to do and you know it, it can help you cut between 10 to 15 percent off your power bill um, uh, simply by building the system and implementing implementing it in your house so um, you know we encourage everyone to do these kind of stuff and uh, you know it costs around with all the materials cost around two hundred dollars if you can find uh, old uh, glass window uh, used water heater and used you know uh, wood plywood two by fours two by sixes then I think you can cost cut a lot of your cost uh, with those leftovers that you, you find but there you go uh, if you want to check it out visit us at University of Guam house number 32 in the Dean Circle and we'll be more than happy to give you a tour and uh, talk to you about this this uh, structure right here